We all know what a telephone system does for a small company. It acts as a voice intercom. It provides voice connections within an office and shares trunks with the outside world. Starbus is a data intercom. It provides data connections between desktop computers, printers, and other peripherals within an office, and it also shares trunks with the outside world. Like telephone systems, Starbus uses ordinary telephone wire. But unlike most phone systems, Starbus requires no central switch or console. Instead, each terminal and PC on the network has full console functions through the use of a simple pop-up menu or a few simple commands. All Starbus extensions are attached to a single pair of telephone wires. Moving or reconfiguring a Starbus intercom station is usually as simple as picking up a telephone and moving it to another jack. There are three steps to installing Starbus. Identify or install the wires. Install hotkey pop-up communication software. Initialize the individual Starbus intercom stations called bus drivers. Starbus requires one free pair of wires at each equipment jack. In many customer sites, these wires will already be in place, drastically reducing the time and cost of installing Starbus. If a customer requires more than one Starbus extension in the vicinity of a wall jack, additional wiring is not necessary. Since Starbus mixes all data conversations onto one channel and separates them later at each user extension, you can expand one jack into many individual user extensions using ordinary telephone splitters. Unlike telephones, each attached computer user, printer, or peripheral will have their own private extension name and number. If Starbus is installed over existing wiring, check to make sure there's an unused wire pair. For installations requiring new wire, use 22-gauge telephone wire. This will support the greater distances some users require to expand their data intercom between buildings. If a wire pair has in excess of 0.3 volts DC or 1 volt AC, the pair is probably in use. It's a good idea to check continuity at the punch-down panel using a signal injector or an intermittent voltage source. Starbus uses one pair of wires terminated onto pins 3 and 4 of a dedicated RJ11 jack. Although Starbus requires a dedicated wire pair, these wires may share a single cable jacket with telephone, thermostat, or alarm wires. Between a bus driver and wall plate, the wire supplied with the bus driver reverses pins 3 and 4. Polarity must be maintained. Since each bus driver is reversed through its RJ11 jack and the wall jack, each Starbus connection passes through two reversals. If you were to connect two bus drivers directly with the wire included with each bus driver, only a single reversal would occur and the system would not work. To test a two-station intercom in the absence of installed wiring, use either non-reversing cable or connect the supplied wires from each bus driver into an ordinary one-to-two telephone splitter. Never place a telephone splitter into a bus driver, only into a wall jack, or leave it hanging, used as a double jack to connect two bus drivers. Starbus is very easy to wire, because all you have to do is make a contact with a right wire at each bus driver. Let's say that the yellow wire is pin 3, and the black wire is pin 4. All the yellow wires must be connected, and all the black wires must be connected, as a separate circuit. At no point should you connect the yellow circuit to the black circuit. At the punch-down block, short out or cross-connect the pin 3 wires and do the same for the pin 4 wires. Use a 150-ohm resistor to join the pin 3 circuit with the pin 4 circuit. This resistor permits the data intercom to operate over great distances. A single-room intercom system can be quickly connected and tested by using a standard 2- or 5-way telephone splitter. To wire this small data intercom, simply plug the telephone wires supplied with each bus driver into the female jacks of the five-way splitter. Don't connect the male pigtail. You needn't worry about installing the termination resistor for an intercom contained on less than 100 feet of wire. Never plug the male pigtail of the splitter into the front panel of a bus driver. This won't work. But you may connect the male pigtail into the Starbus wall outlet of a larger Starbus data intercom network, thereby adding five new users or peripherals to your intercom. If you were to attach telephones with a five-way splitter, each phone would ring on the same extension. But with Starbus, each bus driver is seen as an independently addressed unit with its own unique name and number. Since you can add to or expand the network at any point along the wires, Starbus will support some very creative wiring schemes. 
You can wire the system in almost any way that suits your installation needs. The shape of a wiring scheme is called the topology. Starbus can be wired in star, bus, or tree topologies, or any combination. But always remember to maintain proper polarity. Some guidelines for distance limitations. Spokes each may range up to 500 feet from the center when wired in a star topology. Total wire length may range up to 4,000 when wired in a bus topology. 2,500 feet or less when using only 24 gauge wire. Check the installation guide for more detailed wiring information. Once the wiring is complete, you're ready to install the communication software into user PCs. For IBM compatible PCs, you'll want to install Hotkey pop-up communication software. Hotkey is supplied on a standard five and a quarter inch floppy diskette. Hotkey runs on PCs with DOS system software, version 2.0 or greater. To find out what version of DOS is installed on a PC, type VER at the DOS prompt and press return. Hotkey may perform properly with versions of DOS lower than 2.0, depending upon the use and configuration of the PC. When a PC is turned on, it automatically tests itself to check which features and options are present and to verify that the computer memory is functioning properly. It then loads the DOS system software, which searches for a file named autoexec.bat. If this file is in the root or main directory of the startup disk, the commands in this file are each executed in sequence. These instructions set up the computer for the types of activities most used by the user. Often the last instruction calls a custom menu system or begins the most frequently used word processor or spreadsheet. It makes a lot of sense to have such a file and to add the hotkey command in it so that hotkey will be ready to use with a touch of two keys. The hotkey install program makes this very easy. On IBM and compatible PCs, DOS names these ports LPT1, LPT2, LPT3. Serial ports are named COM1 or COM2. The first PCs used only parallel ports for printing. For this reason, PCs generally send print files to the parallel port. When printing, the data wants to go to the parallel port. We want the data to go to the serial port because that's where the bus driver is. So we must reroute the data from the parallel port. The installation program inserts the line mode lpt1 colon equals com1 colon into the autoexec.bat file. Let's take a look at the hotkey install program.